Okay, everyone, welcome to uh, this agenda of Northampton's or this uh, meeting of Northampton's Urban Forestry Commission, February 1st, 2023. Um, we have multiple members of the public. Um, is there anyone from the public that would like to make public comment? I don't see any hand raised going once. Oh. Oh, Carol. Hello, Carol. Hi, I'm just starting my video for a second. That's okay. Hi, Hi everybody. Nice to see you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, I sent an email last night that Rich was going to forward about the news of that you all saw anyway this morning. But I'm just wondering um, if that makes you feel more positive about a, um, working on the ordinance that you were, you've been talking about, about protecting private trees and, and getting going on that, because I think that with that department, it, it will there'll be, I think, more favorable view of it from the city. So I think it it would be a good time to get going on that. I know you got a lot going on, but given that, I still think it would be a great time because I know it takes a while. That's all. Thank, thank you, Carol. Uh, anyone else from the public that would like to make a comment? All right, seeing none. Um, I will scroll down here. So did folks have a chance to review the minutes that I sent out? I have two. Yes. yes three thumbs up. So um, David, you're the holdout. Uh, you, let me just glance at them. You Take your time, my friend. I'm sorry. No, don't, don't, don't be sorry. Take your time. <laughs> Okay, I, I finished. Okay. All right. Uh, just, uh, I'd like to get a motion to accept the minutes as presented. I'll move. Okay, can I have a second, please? I'll second. All right. Jen. Any, any, thank you, Jen. Uh, any discussion on the motion? No discussion. Wow. Uh, could I have a roll call vote then, Bonnie, please? Absolutely. Rich? Uh, yes. Molly? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Rob? Yes. And David? Yes. Uh, excellent. Thank you. Motion passes. Carol, you have your hand up still. Are you wanting to make a comment or are you all set? Hand down. All right, hand down. Okay, thank you. I don't like to put people's hands down unless I ask first. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, chair report and tree warden. So, a um, couple of things. Um, uh, the public shade tree hearing for three sixty seven Coles Metal Road is tomorrow at two thirty. Um, I had mentioned this in our last meeting, um, but it's been posted in the Gazette twice and all. Um, following the guidelines of MGL 87. And so I will be out there at 2.30. I have received no objections, which is good. Um, but there's always tomorrow or someone can show up at the meeting. Um, and the applicant has agreed, obviously, to pay all the mitigation required for the removal and the uh, legal ad in the, in the paper. Uh, let's see. The other thing I wanted to talk to you briefly about, it's not on the agenda, but um, uh, Rich Parrish, who is on our call tonight, actually uh, filled out an application um, to be to become a member of the commission. So um, that is um, that that is that is good. Good news. Um, thank you, Rich. Um, and so we sort of await um, the process that you all had to go through. Um, with vetting uh, through the mayor's office, et cetera. Um, I also had a really great conversation uh, with um, Devorah and Devorah's right, okay, Devorah. And uh, Devorah was kind enough to uh, 
to spend some time with me on the phone, but also to donate. Hold on a second. To, to donate this wonderful book, which let's see if you can see it. Can't see it. No, nope, move it back. Oh. There, now oh, there it is. All right. I have it upside down. All right. It's the it's the tree uh Durr's uh tree book, Durr and Warren's tree book, which uh Rob um and I have used uh in the past uh profusely to really get Dr. especially Dr. Durr's comments about trees that we want to plant in the public right away or uh trees uh in our urban forest. And uh Dr. Durr doesn't really beat around the bush. He either tells you it's a really good public shade tree or it's gonna be terrible. Mm. So, and uh, so this is great. Devorah, thank you very much. Um, we appreciate it and will be put to good use. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Devorah also expressed an interest in uh, possibly joining um, the commission. Um, and uh, but I think for the time being, I think she um, if I, I don't want to speak for you, Devorah, but um, I think she would actually like to um, be more of a volunteer uh, working in conjunction like with Tree Northampton and, and helping us. Uh, on matters of uh, where we need public input on uh, like some subcommittees or some subgroups that we might put together. So that would be very helpful. So we we look forward to uh, look forward to Rich uh, joining the commission and look forward to Deborah Deborah's assistance. So um, I sort of have like a, a chair report uh, kind of combined with the STO update. So that I'll I'll get to that. Um, so I I met. I met with the mayor today, um, this afternoon, for about an hour to discuss the the draft uh, STO as we, you know, the one we've worked on with planning and sustainability. Um, the mayor uh, gave us uh, her support for the changes, the draft changes to the STO, um, and is going to be communicating with Carolyn Mish uh, from Planning and Sustainability just to have a conversation with her about the draft. And then the mayor is going to sponsor the ordinance uh, at some future city council meeting, um, hopefully uh, by either by the end of this month or the beginning of March. So the process is as follows. When the STO, um, when the draft language goes um, to council, um, the council actually in years past used to just send these ordinances right out to these respective committees for review or commissions. In this case, it's a little, this they've changed the rules a little bit. The, the uh, council actually debates um, the item on the agenda. And then once there is a debate, uh, they actually have a first reading on, on the actual ordinance change or the item. And then it gets referred to, gets referred out to the uh, legislative matters. And in this case, because it's a zoning ordinance, it will go out to the planning board. So once it's gone to legislative matters in the planning board, there are two opportunities for public hearings. They, they're required to have public hearings, two opportunities for public comment. Um, they are done separately. On some occasions, planning and, planning and legislative matters will do a combination public hearing. Other times they choose to do um, an individual public hearing. Uh, they will gather information, hear from the public. Um, they will... Uh, they can make recommendations uh, to either support the existing ordinance as drafted. They could make recommended changes. They could decide not to support the ordinance. So, but eventually those rec those recommendations come back to city council, where the city council basically has to sort through them, and then the city council will make the decision. Um, you know what the final draft will look like, and then they will vote upon the draft. And then once they vote upon it, if the mayor signs it, it becomes an ordinance. So time frame, probably four months at the earliest, given the fact that like legislative matters only meets once a month. Mm. Um, and um, uh, worst case scenario, six months. <clears throat> mm. Again, it's again, it's about it's about uh, schedules, really. It's not about the it's not about actual not wanting to do the work. It's about the scheduling and the process. and introducing it at the right time and catching legislative matters and planning board. So, um, you know, I, and I went, I went over the highlights of the, uh, the ordinance, um, you know, the, the three, the three big changes in my opinion, which are um, the DBH, obviously. Um, the other one being, let me just look at my notes real quick here. 
The other one being, um, well, the first one actually being really just about how we how we adjusted the beginning of the ordinance, you know, legislative findings and intent, and really talk about the meaning of uh, of trees and the benefits that they provide to the urban environment. Two, the table that we put together with planning and sustainability that talks about the changes in the diameter, the breast height for protection. And three, the fact that we're actually capturing uh, you know, a one for one uh, replacement value. So those are the three like big things in this ordinance that I think are really um, going to make a big change. Um, and then I went over the other smaller house cleaning items, such as the changes to make sure that the language is uh, reflects like industry standards for uh, inventories, et cetera. So she was, she was, uh, uh, it was a good meeting, and she was favorable to the to the draft changes. So I will continue to report out to you as I as I get information. Does anybody have any questions? No, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Rich, Rich I, I just have a, a question. Yes, Th thank you for the update. Um, if the if the amended STO is adopted, it's yeah. still only triggered by site plans. It doesn't protect trees on private property, which we've no. discussed. That, 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 that is correct. It's just for site plan review, um, you know, special permit, site plan review, and zoning relief. Right. Yep. So a lot of the urban forest, like 75 or 85 percent, is unprotected, uh, even even under the existing STO, which I get, which brings us back to uh, Carol's point. Um, but did you discuss the prospect of a an even more uh, protective? I, 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 did, I, I did make the mayor aware that, that one of our goals this year is looking at the city's overall canopy density mm -hmm. and having getting a better understanding of um you know what levels were um you know a period of years ago prior to um the uh density uh, zoning um regs that have uh you know ordinances that are now in place uh i said i said to her though that you know we need to just kind of take we need to take the time and step step out and take a look at the overall canopy and see what the percentages are and get a better handle on what where the canopy is at, and then actually make um, decisions based on those facts as to whether or not um, we we would need her support in crafting another another ordinance on private property, basically, or uh, that would protect private trees up to a certain DBH, so, similar to Cambridge. But again, I think it's like we've talked. It's we're striving to gather all that data, which we're, you know, that's what we're going to talk about tonight a little bit in one of our future uh, agenda items. All right. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Any other comments? Seeing none. Okay. Is that uh, it for the chair report, though? Uh, no, I have one other thing to tell you. Um, I am going to be meeting with a student from the Conway School of Design um, that uh, they, the student is actually working uh, on, on tree preservation research a project for another municipality and crafting bylaws to protect trees on private property or creating public engagement programming, et cetera. So oh. I'm going to meet with this um, student on Friday via Zoom oh. um, to sort of, uh, I think, uh, what she wants to, I guess, pick, you know, kind of understand where we're at, how, what we've done, um, where we're going. Hopefully it can assist her in crap, putting together um, a framework for the community she's working for. And maybe I'll learn something as well from it that I can bring back to the commission. So um, uh, yeah, that that's all, Molly. Sorry, go ahead. Well, um, is there anything to report about the LIDAR um, survey and the canopy? status uh no i do not have any update on that uh other other than i did get an it's not really related to that but it sort of is i did receive an email from uh professor john rogan at clark university um professor rogan if you remember is the one that has been working with uh dcr to uh better understand uh tree mortality uh urban heat islands of uh and how the greening of the gateway cities has uh 
um, reduce the urban heat island, and they've basically done some studies in Worcester since like 2013 to present. So I'm going to try to get Dr. Rogan to come to our next meeting and and possible or the first one in March to give us a presentation. Um, so they they are interested actually in using us as one of their survey communities, I believe, because mm -hmm. we have our own um, internal um, urban forestry you know initiative, tree planting initiative. They've been studying Worcester, which, you know, Worcester had um, the Worcester Tree Initiative, which was uh, municipally or, or basically city city run and partnered with a private entity similar to Tree Northampton. They are um, and they are studying multiple greening of the gateway cities where DCR basically is the entity that's planting all the trees. So I think they were going to want to see what we are doing and hopefully we will become one of their. Um, communities that they actually, you know, can turn around some data on, which would be great. So. Can can you remind me? That's great. I'm happy to yeah. hear that. And I look forward to hearing them next yeah. meeting. But um, can you just remind me where we're at as far as the LIDAR surveys? Uh, as far as the LIDAR survey, I'm still waiting for uh, U.S. Forest Service um, uh, from Dave Blonairs to get back to me with their, his information that he was going to try to break down some data. Uh, I have data from 2022, but I need data that goes farther back in time right. in the urban areas of the city to, to determine what the canopy coverage is multiple years. And I was actually asking him to get um, data by ward if possible, but I haven't I haven't had a conversation with him since like the first week of January. And I, I did I did meet with Kent um, last. I think it was last week. I could be wrong. Could be the week before. I'm sorry, Kent. If I'm weeks roll into one another, but Kent has been Kent is working on um, getting some land uh, use coverage data for us, which uh, we'll have at a, a, a future meeting. So I will um, send that out to you once I um, I have some follow up questions for Kent that I haven't had a chance to contact him, but I, I see he's here and I Kent I owe you a phone call. So thank you. So we're just we're trying to we're trying to gather all uh, trying to figure out the best way to gather all the appropriate data so we can make an informed decision about how to move forward. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions before I go to the next agenda item? Okay, seeing none. All right. So the next agenda item, our goals and objectives for 2023, is continuance from last meeting. Um, Molly, did you have a chance to? Yes, I did. All yep, right. I did that this morning. I went through and I went through the um, chart. Okay. And um, I can screen share it if you like. And yes. um, I, yes. I put in green the things that are my understanding that we do want to focus on this year. And uh, let's see. Here we go. Can you see that? Uh, not not yet. Yep. There we go. Okay. So. Um, the lines in green are the ones that I think my understanding that we do want to do this year. The ones in yellow are maybes. And we need we should I think what we should just do is just go down this line by line and see if we agree on what's green and what's yellow. White is ones that I think that we're probably not interested in doing this year. Okay. That sound like a good way to approach it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah that, that's fine. Molly, I just wanted to ask, and maybe they're at the bottom, but the things that we talked about at our last meeting, are those on here as well somewhere? I think so. Wait, what were the things? What things do you mean? I'm going to have to go back in my notes, but I think there were, um, well, you know what? Let's just go through what we have. Okay. Sorry, okay. go ahead. All right. So the first three, I think we're not interested in doing this year. Um, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah, so, so the uh, A13, assemble a listserv of mass tree wards and other groups. So that, there is a, a listserv that exists for that, that's run by um, Mass Tree Wards and Foresters Association. Mm. So I, um, I can probably tap into that or figure out how we could get that data or, I, I, but let me, um, but just leave it white for now. But yeah, I don't know if we, you know, need to do that. It doesn't seem like a priority anyway. I think to be honest with you, that would be 
more for all of us at this meeting uh, would be more to have some kind of listserv of other um, tr other uh, tree commissions tree commissions yeah or tree committees because there are there are I had a tree committee from uh, sale a tree committee member from Salem reach out to me um, at the beginning uh, a couple of weeks ago and wanted to actually have um, wanted me to come in front of their commission to, or committee to actually do a little presentation about our commission but I I I um this is not on this topic I understand but I I wanted to I need to get some feedback from their tree warden and their director of public works because I want to if I'm going to do the presentation I want to make sure that they're there so mm -hmm. it's a well-balanced conversation but yes go on sorry all right well um, can I as a blind uh um a participant right now can you please describe name oh. those three items and all those items that you're list that the people are looking at that oh, I sure. see. yeah Thanks. okay the top um the first line is um getting additional credentials and we decided not to go after that um arborist exchange is the one we're just talking about now but it sounds like it's more of a not exchange of arborist but exchange of information between other tree commissions um, the third one is departmental accreditation. Accreditation. Um, we're not going to go for that right now. Um, the fourth one is urban tree canopy assessment. That's the LIDAR um, or other methods that's in our process. We're in process with that right now. So that's in green. Um, so I have a question about that. Um, maybe it's the next one, but um rob and i were talking about um uh getting our hands on or something on on the list of trees we planted that are merged with the davy tree i i guess what i'm after forget that part okay I guess I guess what I'm after is um, I would like more current info. The current information we have is from 2019 about percent of family species and genus, and I want to know if if that's a possibility. I don't know if you know after Kent's done doing this, if right. So, so I think what what. Jen, what we were what we're looking for, just to put it another way, is actually three potentially three pie charts. One showing the trees that we've planted recent, you know, la the last I don't know, is it eight years? The, the two thousand, we'll call them the two thousand, almost two thousand trees, broken down by species, family, species, genus, and family, and then. Um, a, a chart that shows what we started with, in other words, what the Davy Tree people had us uh, had surveyed, and then it'd be nice to see those two charts merged to see where we are today in terms of percentages. Is that Jen? Yeah. That's that's what we want. Yeah, and what it's what I what we want to use it for is to inform our choices, help inform the choices, like. Are we close to meeting our meeting the top criteria for oaks, for example? Mm -hmm. Or you know what what genus and species should be we be more trying to focus on increasing in our population? So I just added that, Jen, right here in this line fifteen. Okay. Um, evaluate plantings by species. Right, and combined with the original Davy Tree survey. Okay. I guess you could put that in the notes part or something. I can put it all in there. So to answer part of your question, Jen and Rob, uh, I am, those projects, Jen, that were the one that was on Pleasant Street and King Street, all that data has been entered into the spreadsheet that I, the master spreadsheet or the planting spreadsheet for 2022. I need to put all of, now we're culling through everything to make sure that um, all the trees that died yeah. 
are actually taken out of there. If yeah. they're replaced, they're put back. And hopefully by hopefully by our next meeting, I should at least be able to give you that data set so you can actually, and I can probably turn that into a pie chart and give that to you. At least you can see where we're at for the trees we've planted. And we are te tentatively over 2,000 plantings now mm -hmm. because the two projects on on, on Pleasant Street and King Street that were planted by others in the public right of way have pushed us over that mark. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, I have to call like the dead tree list that yeah. uh, was generated over the summer and fall. I have yeah. to pull those trees out and then try to find where those trees were planted, what year they were planted in, and try to pull them back out again. Okay. And, um, I will see if I can reach out to Davey Resource Group to see how we can merge the only way to merge that data would be for them to take the take the master sheet that we have as is and actually um, enter the do a data dump into the system, their system. So I, I'll work on it. I make a little note for myself. <clears throat> I guess we could manually. Well, I shouldn't say we because I don't know how to do it, but <laughs> I guess oh, yeah. someone. Could, yeah. Could yeah, manually, yeah. you know, not every single tree, but just the, you know, in the original inventory, we had X percentage of uh, maples and, you know, I don't know, you know. Yeah, so along those lines, Jen, I think what, we're, what I, I would support that idea that if you just took the top 10 species or 15, mm -hmm. Uh, enumerated them from the Davy list, which is not very difficult, I don't think. So that you would say, okay, we had 2,000 oaks and we've planted 500 oaks, so now we have 2,500 oaks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then just, you know, that just in, in addition, I think it is important that Rich subtract out the dead trees. Absolutely. That, but, but, but yeah, I don't think we need every every single species but yeah the, the top 10 the top 15 whatever yeah. um that would make a a way of us looking at where i mean are, have we bent the numbers are are are, are we um mm -hmm. overcoming the number the the great excess of maple trees and oak trees mm -hmm. be kind of nice to know um okay so that is all listed on this line 15 here okay yep Right there. Okay, I'm going to go back up to the top again. Um, <clears throat> so this line seven is in yellow. Um, tree inventory portion or street tree survey. Is there? Are we planning to update the street tree survey this year or no? Um, it's a good. I mean, I mean, and uh, like have a, like have Davy come back and do work. Or? Yeah. Were we talking about that for this year or or not? No, no I, I think uh, no, I, we were not. But I, I do, but I don't throw, don't dump it because um, we would be eligible to apply for a DCR grant, a challenge grant, to actually update our inventory uh, if we if we chose to do so. So it, that would be, you know, we could get, I think, forty thousand dollars towards. I think it's forty thousand dollars now as the award um so but are you thinking we would do it this year or or do that in no no what would happen is that we would we would we would apply for the dcr grant um letter of intent by uh october 1st and then we would end up doing um a full application for november 1st and then it would be done um you know, because we already have a, we already have, a, we already have an RFP and everything mm -hmm. uh, already built for this. So it would just have to be a little, um, just be worded a little differently and capture different data. But okay, who would like to work on that? <laughs> Anybody? <laughs> Volunteers? Volunteers? <laughs> um, all right. Well, I'll leave that open for now. Okay. Um, okay. The next two. Forest health assessment, um, the next two are in white. Forest health assessment is talking about um, 
other land that's actually forest land. I think that's like the watershed land. It's not actually in Northampton. That's how I'm interpreting that. Um, or it could be other, it could be the overall Northampton, um, like all the trees in Northampton, but I don't think that's something that we're planning on doing, right? Uh, not that I'm... No, I don't think so. Aware of. Okay, the next one is species list and public tree care guide. Am I correct that that is done? Uh, the last time that we... I think it needs to be revisited. And I think, Rich, you, you and I talked about just meeting face-to-face -face briefly to like figure out where we're at. Yep. Um, because it, I think 2018 was the last time we updated it. Uh, 2018, 2019. Yeah, something like okay. that. So I do think we need to look at it. And that wouldn't, that wouldn't be a super heavy lift to, mm -hmm. and I can make, I can, take the lead on that. Okay, I've got you down for that. All right, the next one is um, policy or plan update. In yellow. In yellow, yep. Now this one, we did the we, STO is done essentially. Well, we have to get it through council, but our work on it is pretty much done. Um, and I wrote consider ordinance for private trees. So I put it in yellow because I wasn't sure, you know, it's not a definite. That we're going to do that it depends on the i think it depends on the results of the um those surveys that we're doing everybody good with that yeah molly i wonder if you want to change or make a separate line underneath there that um unless you've done it somewhere else in here and i just don't see it that actually talks about the data gathering and what we're trying to do with the data because i have that okay uh, um, yeah, where is that? Oh, I think that was this. Urban tree canopy assessment. Okay. Line six. All right. I should I can clarify that. I'll just put LIDAR survey. Molly, for line 10, it's yep. it's currently policy or plan update. I wonder if it would be clearer if it were something like you know, consider a tree protection ordinance similar to the one in Cambridge, Mass. I can add that over here. This is the, we're in column B, those um, things are the things that are listed by DCR in their I list of, of possible things that you can get points for. Okay. So okay. that's the language that I used, but I can put, um, I could put consider ordinance for private trees similar to Cambridge, Mass, if, if you want. Sure, and then somebody noted that it's really related to line at item six, which is the urban tree canopy assessment. Yeah, right. Yeah, those are connected, this one and that one. Um, okay, next is single issue plans. Well, the only specific issue just and Molly, can you just make yeah. sure you name the line and the color because we have oh, yeah. okay okay sorry yeah accessible next one, issue yep you. yep next is line 11 it's in green um under the heading single issue plans and this is a carryover from last year that never got done i was going to do it and i didn't do it identify streets used as cut throughs or otherwise in need of traffic calming for example oak street clement street um, sorry about that. I just wanted to change that typo. Um, Scanlon, Bliss, and Cross Streets and make a planting plan for them. So I will, I will put that on my list to do this year. Um, okay, next line is 12. It's in green, tree planting. Well, we're doing tree planting. <laughs> Every year we do tree planting. So that's ongoing. Rob and Rich, I put as being the lead people on that. Um, I think you might, depending on Jen's approval, put Jen's name there. Okay, sure. And maybe uh, we'll see if maybe Christina's name. Okay. Well, I'm just putting, it's these are just the lead people, not like everybody who's working on it. 
Right, right. No, but, but uh, I think Jen's begun to lead the way here. Okay, great. As I live in Maine now. Yeah. You do? Yeah. I didn't know that. No, yeah. Rob, Rob, still, Rob still lives in Northampton. Yeah, yeah, I, I do live in Northampton. I'm sorry, but I'm I'm in Maine about almost half the time. So. I'm, oh, I didn't realize it was that much. Yeah. Oh, I, should okay. said, I should have said I'm in Maine at the moment, and I do come back and forth. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I added Jen and Christine, and for those in the um, Zoom audience, um, Christine is, um, wait, what's her last name again? I forget. Um, Peterson. Peterson, yeah, who has been, um, she's attended a lot of our meetings, and she helps out on various projects with us as a volunteer. Okay, the next line is in yellow. It's line 13 under the heading tree planting. This is to evaluate the neighborhood tree planting program and modify if necessary. This never got done last year. That's the program where we work with organizers in a specific neighborhood who fill out a request that's online to have trees planted in their on their street and they help organize and you know organize their neighbors together to um, work on that. Um, we haven't really evaluated that to see if we need to change something. So does anybody want to take that on? Oops. That sure sounds interesting to me. <laughs> wow. Who who what just said that? That's Deirdre. What do you call that? What are you calling that? Well, it we call it the neighborhood um tree planting program. Great. I'm gonna write that down and I'm gonna mute now. Thank you. Okay, sure. Yeah, we've done it. Um, we did it along Prospect Street um, across from Child's Park, and we did it um, on, what was that street off of um, South Street? Monroe Street, that area? Uh, we, we did it everywhere there. We did it South Street. We did it Monroe. We did Lyman. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we did a lot of planting East Street on uh, in that neighborhood. Yeah, that whole neighborhood. And wasn't there one other neighborhood that we did a different yeah, year the, the pilot was orchard street right that's right so we've done it three times so far yeah. and is i think there's still a form on online no um, we we i had it disabled because okay. we we're going to review this so if someone is wanting to take the lead on this so we can just you know take a look at it i mean i'm willing to work with someone but i i don't i mean i have i think i've got a lot of assignments so yeah, it would be helpful if someone would take the lead and I'd be more than happy to chime in when needed. I think we also took that form down because of COVID. I think it was oh, yeah. right. because of COVID. We just couldn't. We, there's no way we could handle that. So I wonder if I could put Sue down, even though she's not here. Well, you could volunteer Sue for everything because she's not here. Because <laughs> you missed the meeting. You got to do it all. So, I know. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right. Well, I'll, I'll leave it like that. But we know we need others. I'll put, and I'll put that in green. Okay. I mean, after this, we could, uh, or Molly, you could send out an email and say these are hmm. these are. Um, we need people for this. Goals. We need lead people for these items. Yeah. Okay. Okay, next one is line 14. It's in yellow right now. It's another one about evaluating um, the trees that have been planted with the areas that we said we wanted to plant as opposed to species, which is the next line. So we, um, on one of our spreadsheets somewhere, several years ago, we, we picked out like what were our priorities, like social justice areas, um, gateway areas, pedestrian, heavily used areas, et cetera. Mm. And we've never really looked at our data to see if we have met those goals. Um, I think it'd be kind of a little bit of a big job because um, you'd have to go through like by street, I guess you'd organize all our planting data by street and see which streets fit into which, um, which of those criteria. Um, so it's kind of a big job. I'm not sure how to do that, but it seems like we should do it because otherwise what's the point of having a plan if we don't find out if we actually did the plan? 
Well, I mean, the, the master the master sheet, once I'm finished plugging in the information from 2022, will show all of that. Oh. It's going to tell you where all the trees are planted, by street, by ward. Right. By species. Yeah, but then, like, which streets match up with, say, social justice areas, and which yeah, ones you, you, are the like, gateway areas? Well, you would, you know, like like Ple like Pleasant Street, uh, you know, King Street, uh, yeah. Street, Bridge Road, you know, you, you'd have to... It's not the the sheet would be it's not drilled down that way, but it would be easy to extrapolate that data if you yeah if someone wanted to do it. But it is kind of a big job because you have to cross reference right um, existing um, maps with uh, with that with that data. But I well, I could try starting to work on that, but no guarantees that I'll do the whole thing. Okay, because I was also involved with making that original, um, those original goals. Uh, Molly, hold on a second. Kent, uh, Kent raised his hand. Hi, Kent. Hi, yeah, I can possibly help with that and also analyzing the inventory for species. Um, Great. If you have, you know, specific geographic areas that you want to analyze, um, that can be done by matching up the locations with the, um, you know, the economic justice regions or, or whatever. Oh, that would be fantastic. You don't have to do it by, by street. You can do it geographically. Um, Maybe you and I could meet sometime to talk about that for at least this line 14. Yeah, that's and fine. If you, if you want to work on line 15, doing it by species, um, you could talk with Richard Jen. Okay, yeah, I've been sort of waiting for that data. Um, yeah, Kent, I'm, I'm sorry. I... I have a I have a new staff person who just came back to work on Monday who is actually entering who is working on that data. So hopefully I'll have it for you by next week. Okay. So it's just I want to make sure that because uh, we have to do some, as I said earlier, um, we have to zero out the trees that were that died and replaced that were replaced. And I have to make sure it's accurate. Yeah, you might want to just mark the ones that have died, not delete them so you can track survival. Yes, and and I, once I have that all done, I you I will get on a Zoom call with you, uh, and I'll show you what we've done, and then you can take it from there. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to help. Yeah, thank you. I also have to. We have some other data for trees that were planted in the public right of way as well. That is, I have to capture uh, on Carlin Drive too. So that is got to get entered. So just a lot of moving parts, but we're getting there. Okay, great. I'll be patient. Thank you for your help. Yeah, that's great. Okay, next is line 16. Um, it's in green, tree planting. Um, the task is decide on 2023 planting location priorities. Uh, so some of that is already in process because um, of the Leeds school planting. And then Rob and Alicia met. I can, Rob, you can talk about this better than me, but. Rob and Alicia met and there's a backlog of setback trees and matching the ones we have in the nursery. And so um, it's kind of partially done, right, Rob? Yeah, so um, if you add in the trees that will be planted at Leeds that Jen's working on, and you take all the trees that didn't get planted last year, but we already selected sites and people have already asked for trees, not all, all trees they ask for are setbacks. Sometimes people have asked for trees in, in the um, tree belt in front of their house. Uh, you add it all up, we, that's 125 trees. Um, that, yeah. um, so the spring will mostly be planting, I think we'll mostly be planting trees that um, would have been planted last year if we had planted more trees. Um, and then I know David's working on possibly another, who knows, it could be another 20 trees at other schools for the fall, maybe. Um, and so we don't, and then also Rich has is producing a list of tr places where he's taken down relatively mature trees where we need tree replacement. So a lot of this year will be driven with sort of catch up and, 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 um, fixing past okay past i think that's so, i think that's true um it sounds like it's pretty much done 
that's already been done then. A lot has been done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we have 125 sites matched with about 80 or 90 trees, and then we're missing about 30 trees. So what we've been trying to do is use the trees that uh, were, they were all, they're actually sitting in the nursery. Mm -hmm. And so we've we spent quite a lot of time matching the trees in the nursery with sites that there are requests for. Great. Uh, from Great. The public. But uh, this is predicated on um, a pace of 200 trees a season, a whole year. So in other words, it, there have been years where it's been three or 400, in which case we would have to really be scrambling and making decisions about where to plant trees in a bigger way. Mm -hmm. which, but I think, I think, Rich, am I right? We're, we're sort of heading in the 200 realm? For, the, for, this, for this year? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, um, and I just want to remind everyone partly why we're cutting down to two back towards 200 is that last year we found ourselves with too many young trees out there that overwhelming the ability to protect them from drought because you can't get enough water. Rich was trying to water yeah, right. I think three years worth of trees. It was like maybe. A thousand trees. It was it was a mess. Yeah, hard. Right. So that's why that's what's happening. Okay. Great. The next four items are all things that are ongoing. Um, these are all so they're all in green. It's um survival monitoring, the ongoing monitoring of health of planted trees, the community tree nursery. Um, we've established that years ago, and so we just have to continue to maintain it. Uh, planting to removals ratio, uh, that calculation is done annually, and young tree training, the ongoing pruning of young trees. Uh, am I correct that those are all ongoing? Yes, and you should add uh, where my name is, you should add Rich Parish. Okay. Unfortunately, you can't just put Rich P because that doesn't fit. Right. Up. I can't even put Rich P A yeah. or P A R. P A R. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. We're just going to have to use the whole name. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Next is, oh, I don't know why I put this one in green. It should be yellow. Line 21, utility tree care. We were going to check with National Grid and Lewis Tree. I'm not sure exactly what we were going to do to talk with them about their tree pruning. Does anybody remember more specifically about that? Um, I think that we were just going to sort of like uh, I met with Lewis Tree, their foreman, um, in late December about a circuit trimming they're doing. So I mean, you could just you could put that in yellow and just say okay. I'm going and put my name next to it because I'm in okay. contact with them all the time. Yep. Okay. So it's on, I could put it ongoing too. It's ongoing, yeah. All right. Okay, next is in white, line 22, urban wood utilization. Now, I don't remember where this is at. Did we do this or not do it? Look into urban wood bank program to make firewood for residents from removed trees can get DCR grant, ideally for people to use for building um, to sequester the carbon. We so I, I, look, I looked in, into the using the using it as lumber and um, found it difficult to find a way. Mm -hmm. I spoke to a couple of mil, a few mills and it just seemed very difficult to actually use it as lumber. I, I did not look into what it would take to make it into firewood. Hmm. All right. Why don't I? So you could put that Rob found it difficult to make lumber. All right. Let me. You wanted, or I don't know what you want to do. I'm going to get rid of the um, the part about the second half of that. Um, do we still want to do this part about firewood, or or I would doesn't seem to me a priority. I would leave it in white. I mean, yeah. I think it's worthwhile if we have down the road. I just feel like we've got a lot on our plate, and I think yeah, it's yeah. great. To do not that, a priority right now. Yeah, I don't, I just don't, 
but I think to keep it on our radar is important. Yeah, okay. Um, next is line 23, tree protection. That's ongoing. Um, 24, so that's green. And next one's green, enforcement proceedings. Um, the chart says generally happens each year. That's ongoing. Uh, next is line 25 in yellow, forest health management. Um, this is one that I think has to do with, um, wait, I thought this was earlier. Didn't we already have this one? Oh yeah, forest health assessment. I don't know how that's different than forest health management. Hmm. Uh, ask DPW forest manager, or the forester who manages, I guess the um, the watershed land, if this was done, well, does the forest management plan count as a natural areas plan? Well, forest health management suggests that you actually take some action, whereas yeah, the other right. one's an assessment. But... Well, I know that th this is really only for the purpose of getting points for this um, this program through DCR. We don't, it's not really our bailiwick. Um, and I know that there is a, you know, the DPW does have a, a forester, Mike Morey, who has been implementing a forest management plan. So I don't think we really need to um, do that, but maybe we could count it toward points if, if we wanted to. It'd be interesting to hear back occasionally, you know, are the, is the watershed really losing all of its hemlocks or not? So mm. be interesting. Well, I can tell you it's definitely losing all the red pine. The red pine has all been cut out and removed because of the, um, what's that disease that kills it really fast? Yeah, uh, because diplodia and uh, red pine scale. Right. And, and the good thing is that there's a lot of hardwoods coming up underneath that red pine. So it's just going to kind of convert those areas to hardwood forest. Uh -huh. Nice. Um, uh, I think I'm Ma, Ma, just one second. I just want to, it's 525. So, um, okay. I let's wanna, see what do we have. Okay. So, there's I, not very much left, perfect. or we could, or we could finish it next meeting. Uh, I'm okay finishing at this meeting if other, the other commissioners are okay with that. I, I would like to go through this. Okay. We're almost, we're, I don't okay. think the rest is, are going to take very long. Okay. Um, open space acquisition is in yellow. Uh, we were going to ask Carolyn if open space was acquired. Again, this is just for the purpose of getting points. Okay. Anybody care about doing that? Uh, I can I can ask her. Um, okay. So you can just put my name in there. Okay. Because I'm still kind of rounding up the um, the uh, Arbor uh, Arbor Day the uh, Tree City USA application. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, next is line 27, cooperative partnerships. I just put for 2023, Rotary Club and LEED School. And that's in green. Um, 28 is getting- I would uh, also put on there the NHS Environmental Club because ah. I'll tell you when we get to Arbor Day, but um, they're another partner. Right. Okay. Next is um, getting a new tree board member. Um, I'll I'll put pending. That's in green. Okay. Um, next we have a whole bunch of white ones, so ones that we're not planning on doing, um, or not yet. Okay, service organizations. I'm not even sure what that was. If interested, a commissioner could look into these programs and initiate. I'm not sure what that was. I think we don't want to do that right now, correct? Yeah. Okay. Volunteer tree care. This has to do with training uh, people to do tree planting and pruning. So we, there, we have a we have a, a really fairly serious um, pruning uh, tr uh, education piece going on right now. Oh, okay. So it's, it's happening. Yeah, so instead of is this happening, it could be happening, yeah. And I'd say every time we have a larger planting, we have a, uh, Tree Northampton gets a crew of leaders and mm -hmm. we're training, you know, 
all kinds of volunteers that have never planted before. So uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Okay. Happens all the time. Great. Okay. Next is um, volunteer coordinator. That's just, we get points, you know, through DCR. If we have a coordinator for volunteers, that would probably be, um, oh, what's her name? With Tree Northampton. Um, Vicki. Becky? Oh, Vicky, yeah. Yeah. Um, do we, does anybody care about getting these points? <laughs> if so, we can find out if Vicky qualifies as a volunteer coordinator. Uh, I would just, just leave it in there. Okay, I'll just leave it. Yep, just in white. Okay, citizen science. Okay, this one we might do. Um, possibly get help with monitoring for the spotted lantern lantern fly once we um decide what we want to do about that so that's i'm going to put that one in yellow okay these two we're going to skip those they're just um repeats of what we've already done um let's see delete Okay, next one is white line 33, community forestry report, forestry report. Any member of the UFC can make an annual state of the urban forest report to the city council. We haven't ever actually done that, um, but it's something we could do. Anybody interested? Okay, I'll leave it in white. Okay, the next three are publicity campaigns. They're in green. One is to design and use door hangers to go with the white stakes at intended plantings. Um, the next one is to design and distribute door hangers for desirable setback tree addresses. Mm. I think we are definitely planning to do both those things, right? Yes. Okay, who, who's in charge of those? And I'm wondering if Devora is interested in working on either of those. Uh, I have, I have the, I think I have the draft door hanger for um, one of the two, both of them, I think. Okay. Um, but I have to, let me make a little note to dig it up. I was supposed to do that with Pursue a while back, so. Um, so we would just need to get them printed. Yeah, they would have, yes, they would have to be vetted, obviously, to make sure the information is correct on them. And then, um, we would get approval from, uh, I, I would actually run them, uh, I'd run them through Donna just to make sure that they are, uh, because they are going to have the city seal on them and et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, like I've done all the other documents. Okay. Um, then we'll just need a plan to actually get them out there. Cor correct and so you would basically bring you know when we start staking these locations that are where there's uh residences that are abutters you would hang these things on their door yeah etc okay all right yeah so yeah. i'll just say with plantings yeah and then this other one for the setback trees do we have a plan for um uh, um where we want to it seems like we need to identify which which are the places that we'd like to put setback trees that people haven't already requested. Is that something, Rob, that you that you know about? Yeah, I, I guess I should probably consult with Alicia, and so you could put I think Alicia and Rob. Um, there was I don't have a a way of saying oh it's these trees or the this site or that site, but maybe. We could come up with some generalities of where the effort should be made, some guidelines. Maybe put Jen in there too, if it's okay. Isn't that, that related to evaluation of the neighborhood tree? That, yeah. That's a different, that's kind of a different, I mean, it could be, but that's a different thing. The neighborhood tree planting. Oh, well, that's different was a program that people could apply for and um that's for a whole neighborhood not just yeah. one place yeah so, so let me clarify what this would be for, for david is that um there are locations 
that would be very advantageous to have trees. So I'll give you an example is the old school commons. You know, the corner across from Edwards Church and across from uh, the Academy of Music. Yeah. That's a site where it's a huge intersection with no trees. Rich was able to go and talk to speak to the Academy of Music. He got a couple of trees there. Uh, I happened to talk to someone at Old School Commons, got the trees there. But uh, there are a lot of sites where, you know, we don't, knocking on the door often doesn't even work. It's a business or something and you want to leave a note. And so, um, and a lot of a lot of those sites were identified when I did those quarter mile surveys. Yeah, um, that That's lists right. a lot of setback places. You know that would be good for setback trees. So we could use that and absolutely yes. prioritize. Yeah. So for instance, uh, you know, across from um, I guess it's called McDonald House. Is that the, the right yeah. place? Yeah. And where we really wanted to put trees, and there's a big lawn across the street from them, um, not far from that elm tree. And, you know, it's just a matter of someone getting the energy to track down the owner and speak to them, which it's a little easier to drop this um, hanger. Yeah. And so we'll see if it wor works. I mean, we can probably put out like 50 hangers on sites like that where we really, really know we want a tree. Exactly. And then if if we get even a handful of answers, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Okay. So you and Alicia and Jen are down for that. Yeah. Is that okay, Jen? Okay, um, next is a publicity campaign in green about public outreach about spotted lanternfly that Jen and I will do. And Jen, I'll call you about setting up a meeting for our next, uh, figure out our next steps. Um, in white, we've got interpretive program, outdoor classroom. Um, oh, this week, Oh, this is already, this is a repeat of earlier. So I'm gonna take that out. And the last one is Organize Arbor Day, um, which we're definitely doing. Uh, I think Sue is doing a lot on that. Um, and that's it. Anything else we should add? For now, we can always add it later. Okay, I'll stop screen sharing. Oh, oh, the heading says 2022 and 2021. No, we're on the we're on this one, 2023 goals. Oh, oh I see yeah. it. Okay. Oh yeah, the whole heading for the whole spreadsheet yeah. should be changed. That could make it more harder for people to identify where they're going, I guess. Uh-huh. Like me who have trouble finding their way. There. I changed it to chart of annual goals. Nice. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Yep. And um, that resides in the drive. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Okie dokie. Anybody have any follow up questions before we move on to the next agenda item? Okay. The next agenda item is uh, tree selection criteria for public and setback tree planting document um so i i forwarded you a draft document that jen oh yeah put together um for you to review and maybe jen could do a little presentation or just kind of talk about the document and the reason for putting it together sure uh it just kind of became apparent to me um, we have a lot more public engagement in these meetings and outside and we just get a lot of questions about um, how we choose trees and um, <clears throat> efforts to plant native trees and things like that and I just thought it'd be really helpful to just have a document that could be uh, potentially posted on uh, the UFC's website and possibly Tree Northampton's website that we could, if there became a question, we could say, oh, you know, we have this document, take a look at that. And then if you have further questions or need clarifications, you know, we can uh, 
you know, talk about that. So uh, I have some basic bullet points of what goes into um, uh, the deeper I got, the more complex it, you know, <laughs> you, it, it's a really, you know, it's like a multi-level zoom out, zoom in kind of project. So um, I'll just briefly, the bullet points are site evaluation, uh, species diversity goals, the 10, 20, 30, um, for 5, 10, 20, that was the one that was just what I used. Uh, tree species availability, that's like nursery stock. Uh, use of native trees, have a little paragraph on the comp uh, our efforts there. Uh, climate change considerations, which is primarily about um, trying to choose plants that survive uh, storm events. Uh, staying abreast on updated tree varieties, uh, monitoring future pest threats. Um, that goes into, you know, how many more ALB host trees should we put out there, for example. And then uh, a reference to the planting guidelines booklet. So uh, Sue gave me input on this and uh, Rob and Rich. Um, I have two tiny little two tiny little comments. Yeah, if I can remember what they were. Um, let's see. There was one up here. Um, oh, under species diversity goal, I think we should just say in 2016, a professional street tree inventory was completed. OK, yep. And then um, I can change that. What was the other one? Um, Oh, it was just a silly. Oh, right here, pallet. It's like it's just spelled wrong. That's all. Oh, I'm a really bad a, speller. I Thank think you. it's like an artist palette is P A L E T T E or something like that. Oh, it is. Oh, it it's T E E. It's T T E at the end. This palette is is the one of like that you put firewood on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that shows you where I come from. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right. I'll look that up. Otherwise, it's excellent. I think it's excellent. Thank you. Along the same lines as Molly with small things, is it? Uh, it might be correct when you say varieties, but I wonder if it would be better to say species and cultivars. Yeah, I I thought about that, and I'm willing to change that. But I I have found that people I, to use species cultivars, people don't really under the general public doesn't really know what that is. That's fine. I'm, that. I'm happy with varieties as okay. long as it's not wrong. Yeah, I did think about that. So yeah. that that was why I went for the more general term. Because if of the it audience. is a general term for that, then I'm happy with it. Yeah, just because of the audience. It was yeah. It's not yeah, Great. I know what you're saying though. Good job. Very helpful. Thank you. Yeah. So I, I think uh Rich, we what if we wanted to post it on do we have on the ufc website does it have to go to the mayor or like what? no no i can ask uh, we can just you know vet it for the grammatical things and then uh we can actually just post it on our website i can have it done um internally okay do we need to vote on that um no i mean it would be helpful to, I think, maybe just, I mean, if everyone's in agreement with this document, and I don't think we need to vote on it. Okay. Uh, right. uh, uh, Carol has a question. Go ahead, Carol. Hi. Um, I wonder, is that something that, that, that I could see before you make it final that I could look at? Can the public look at it, or are you just going to make it into a final document? Um, you know, that, that's, that's a good question. I mean, I, I, you can look at it, but I mean, it really, the document just explains our process as to how we get from point A to point B, I guess, in essence. So, I think it also explains the philosophy. It, it does. And I mean, I think right. it, I, I don't, if the commission is not willing, if the commission is not going to entertain making any amendments to it at this point, then it will just get posted on the website and you would be able to capture it right there. So, so you're saying you're not going to entertain any any amendments? I I, didn't, I wasn't aware of this document. I have I can't I couldn't read it obviously from just being flashed on the 
screen, but. Well, won't it get posted within minutes? Uh, it, will, it will be entered as, yeah, it'll be entered as part of the record of the next set of minutes because it was, it's in our meeting. So it'll be posted on our minutes. I mean, sorry, it'll be posted on the website after um, the minutes are adopted at the next meeting. Oh. So the minutes from this meeting, when they're adopted at our next meeting, that will be part of the meeting minutes. And then if uh, Karen has time to post it on the website, she can do so at some point in the near future. So. Rich, I have a, I have a question. There, there wouldn't be any conflict of Tree Northampton posting it also, right? I mean, we can. No, because it doesn't Tree Northampton have a link to our tree list and planting guidelines. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just have a little heading. So. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, really what it is, Rob, it's just a link from the webpage of the Urban Forestry Commission to the, um, to, to yeah. whatever. It's like having, a, just set, sharing a link with someone. So, I mean, I'm, I'm fine sharing the document, but it'll, it'll be posted shortly. So. Right. Why don't we, I have a suggestion. How sure. about if we post it now on Tree Northampton um, because it's not an official government, you know, thing that has to be approved and blah, blah, blah. And then Carol or whoever could just look at it if they want. And at like I, next meeting, we could vote I, to adopt it. I, I don't think that would be. Well, all right, let, let's I don't think that would be wise. And the reason I'm saying it would be wise is because the document is not a, is not doesn't belong. The document wasn't generated by Trina Northampton. Yeah. The document was generated by the Urban Forestry Commission. And if the Urban Forestry Commission so approves the document, then the, doc the document belongs to the city. Yeah. So once it's posted on the city website, then it actually can be shared because that is, you know, a public domain. I, that's, I, what I, that's what I was checking. Is it public? Yeah. Is it shared? So is it I, I might make a suggestion. I, I think we should do this. Let's, um, why don't we actually leave, uh, don't do anything at the moment, leave this on, put this on the agenda for next meeting. Everyone actually get a good look at it. It'll be in our next draft minutes. It'll be attached to the draft minutes. If Bonnie could get that, I, I will get it to her once we make the corrections. And then those minutes will be available. And at that point, um, Carol, you'll be able to see it because um, I can I can share you the share the draft minutes, and then you we can have more commentary at the next meeting. Would that be Would that be okay? That sounds good. Thank you. Okay, everyone. Ever are the other commissioners okay with that as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Rich, do you want me to just fix the the things? Um, you, uh, yeah, you can, or you can. You know what, Jen? It's in a Word document. Um, so just send me, just send me an email. Yeah, send me an email with the changes, or change the shared document, and I'll fix it in a Word document. Yeah, I'll I'll just change the the shared document. Correct. And, and Correct. tell you when I do that. Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. I just don't want to give you another thing to have to. Do. No, it's okay. It's fine. Yeah. It's, it's not. I just want to say, Jen, that I've been dealing with this uh, species selection for 10 years. Never wrote it down. I'm so glad that you did. Thank you. Huh, thanks. Well, it's just super complex and I get asked about it all the time. And, and it, you know, I, it, it would just be easier for me to say, yeah. hey, you know, here's a document that, you know, is all the multiple layers. So. Yeah, right. well, well uh, partly it was during those years that it kind of became clear how we did select them because right. became, like the whole idea of assisted migration only migrated into our thinking during the more recently. We it wasn't really something we spoke of right um, the migration. Right. And it's become very important. It's become a key part of our selection process. Right. Okay. Any other comment before we move on to the last agenda item? Okay. All right. Spring planting and Arbor Day update. Uh, so the, the Sue is not here to comment about the Arbor Day. Arbor Day. Uh, I do have. I did order the seedlings. So those seedlings have been secured. They're ordered. They will be delivered. 
Um, we Sue did have a conversation, and I don't want to speak for her, but she had a conversation with Barbara Devlin from um, the Rotary Club about planting, um, doing a, a spring planting event and trying to find a day in, in uh, April that worked for us and the Rotary Club. So we are waiting for um, confirmation on that. Jen, you probably know more than I do at this point. You have your hand up. Oh, I, I just wanted to say that um, I, uh, David um, set up a uh, walk around with the um, NHS, a couple of people who are interested in tree planting at the high school. So I did that. And in the process, they were science teachers and also the, the advisors of the environmental club. So I um, asked them if they'd be interested in bagging the seedlings and they were like really jazzed about it. So um, I, I can kind of take, you know, do what we did last year, take all the seedlings and instead of bringing them to the school that I'm at, I can take them over there and be there with them. And um, uh, they were really excited about it as a project. Um, yeah, so great. Uh, yeah. Hey, hey Jen, you're not you're not at a school anymore. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Yes. Name correct. Yours. Yeah. Uh, Hence the reason why my name is on half the things on this. <laughs> the whole thing. Uh, uh, go ahead, David. Well, I just I just want just a brief update. Um, so Barbara Devlin and I have been talking about this uh, the planning data leads, and it, it seems like April twenty second, which is Earth Day. Is kind of favored by everybody with a rain date for April 23rd. So I think it's, it's really just depends on Tony, uh, the, the super, the grounds guy, taking a look and giving it his okay. But and I think if, if he does that and Rich does too, then we're good to go on April 22nd. And Rich and I have a meeting with Tony and the, and his supervisor uh, or foreman, grounds foreman on Monday. So we're at, at lead school. So we're getting there. Um, and we are, uh, Rob is, uh, as he indicated earlier, through our going through our goals and objectives that we're working on, uh, setting out, uh, trying to gather data for planting locations to try to put together a bare root order um, and also to put together a con track potentially with Amherst Nursery for grow bags again this this spring, but we're still trying to flush that all out. Um, but hopefully we'll have a little more of an update um, at the end of the month, I think. Yeah, we're very close to knowing. Because yeah. when, when it's really the lead school, once that kind of gets determined what stock and from where, the rest of it is, will fall into place. Yeah, and then Rob, I am, I have not forgotten about the list of the tree removals. I am, it's right, actually, right in front of me. On my that list. is the one other piece. Yes, I'm, the rest I'm, of it we've already got all written down and, and added up all the trees. We have we have a tree count. My, my apologies. I wish I had 10 arms because I could do a lot more. But I, just don't have to do well, I think we're still on time uh, to get out there and tag trees. It's usually... Oh, terms. yeah. I, yeah. I, I think this will be I, for that particular. Yeah. John has a plethora of trees at Amherst Nursery. So I'm not. There's more trees there this year than I've ever seen before. Oh, good. So, yeah. Because of the lack of the um, fall push for planting mm. the state by DCR made a big difference. Um, so, yeah. How many trees are being planted at Leeds? Uh, right around 25. Mostly along the road or back area or where? No, it's uh, the goal uh, for the principal was really to for primarily for shade, for uh, yes. shade and energy yes. consumption and uh, particularly uh, around the building and on the playground. Uh, oh. There is a belt that we uh, along the um, the street that uh, will also Oh. put some trees there too. Cool, that's really exciting. Anyone else have any comments, questions about Arbor Day? All right. Um, 
Okay. Uh, any other business not anticipated by the chair that anyone wants to bring up? No, none. Wow. I just have a, a question for you, Rich. Um, yes. Can you remind me what you said about, um, I think you said you were going to update the big list of all the trees that have been planted. Is that yeah. what you said? Yes. Yeah, so um, Abby came back to work on Monday. So Abby has been helping me, Abby Phelps. So she is back working here. So she's been ah. helping me um, update the tree planting list because, uh, uh, and this is what Kent is waiting for, this um, the master sheet. So Kent can actually take that data and and um, digest it and create something for us for species diversity and also for uh, tree mortality. Uh -huh. so, um, we are still entering data from things that were planted. Uh, in particular, uh, the projects that were done by others, um, which accounts for like 50, 50 plus trees. Which projects do you mean? Uh, Pleasant Street, uh, Pleasant Street and um, King Street. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And and as Jen, uh, when Jen and I had to walk around uh, back in December, the uh, the planting plans and the actual as builts are very different. So we had to we had to walk all those projects, and I had to walk the King Street project and the other project on Carlin Drive, um, where the fire department um, built a, a larger parking area. We planted, we captured a whole bunch of public shade trees out of that um, uh, planting job as well. So that's the data that we're entering, plus subtracting the dead trees and just marking them as dead and determining what years they were planted, the ones that died, and going back and making sure that. We're not double counting them. That's all. Just because whatever I give, whatever I give to Kent to make into this um, um, charts uh, and data that we can that we can look at, I just want to make sure it's accurate. Mm -hmm. so, well, can you let me know when you finish it too? Because I'm I'm going to work with Kent to do sure. the analysis having to do with geographical areas that were planted. Yep. yep. Yep, I will. Hopefully it'll be done. I'm working on that simultaneously with get, trying to get our Tree City OSA uh, uh, thing that's finished. So ah, okay. great. that's why I need multiple arms. If I Because I only really yeah. type with two fingers. So if I had a couple more hands, I'd be doing all right. <laughs> so. All right. Any other questions? Uh, Jackie, Jack, Jacqueline, I'm sorry. <laughs> all good thank you so much thank you guys for everything that you're doing um it's a lot just listening in and and i'm so appreciative so thank you and rich um thank you you know for for speaking with the mayor about the sto uh the professor at clark or wh whoever that person is and yep. um speaking with the the student from the conway school of landscape design and also for speaking at the community resources meeting, I think that was um, in January, <laughs> sometime recently. I don't know if that was the 19th, I get my meeting. Oh, the 23rd, the 23rd. So thank you for speaking at that, that meeting. That was part of a, a series of round table meetings on housing in Northampton. And that specific one was about housing and sustainability and neighborhood character and design. Hmm. So, um, I know we're all super stoked for the information on tree canopy uh, and if those 2013 zoning ordinances, the um, uses by right and zero or reduced lot line, uh, if those have had an impact on our, on our tree canopy. Um, it seems like the STO gets to the trees that are um, kind of affected by site plan review and special permits, which is for land on on properties that are one acre or larger. Is that right? Uh, uh, yeah, well, yes and no, because um, people that apply for variants, um, that can be on less than an acre. And also uh, folks that are wanting to build accessory uh, dwellings on their property. They can yeah. be under an acre. They have to all go in front of the planning board for site plan review or special permit. So, okay. I mean, the the S, I mean, the original STO. I think pe folks think it like captures these larger projects and and um, developments, and it does. But it also captures um, 
the smaller um, projects that are that are allowed under the existing zoning, but still require site plan review. Mm. Awesome, uh, thank you for that clarification. Yep. Yeah, you're you're welcome. Awesome. And I and I don't want to misspeak either. I mean, I'm still I'm not a zoning expert by any means, um, <laughs> and I've learned a lot over the last. I don't know how many years I've been doing this, but I've I've learned a lot, and I have a long way to go. I, I talk to, to Carolyn at times. It's uh, it's amazing how much information that I can gather from her. But then I have to call her back because I I'm like, what? You have to go. <laughs> what are those acronyms again? Let's start over again. So it's uh it's a learning process, but we're getting there. But thank you. I'm right there with you. Thank you. Thank you. So cool. That is so good to know. And then um, with with Carolyn and the Zoning Board of Appeals, the whole Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals, I mean, I, I'm guessing that you're involved when when tree issues get brought to your attention by those two boards. Uh, the only time that I'm involved uh, with the significant tree ordinance is when there is a applicant who um, submits an application and they are, you know, needing to uh, remove, you know, protect trees that are 20 inches or greater or remove trees. I actually see the data. I see the plan. I get to review it. Um, I, you know, talk, uh, work with Carolyn to either uh, agree or disagree with the arborist assessment on the particular trees on the project. Um, and then the other piece of the puzzle, uh, once the planning board, you know, goes through the project and um, the project is uh, approved and there's uh, an order of conditions, they could order, uh, you know, X, Y, and Z trees to be planted here, there, or there's requirements that the applicant has to plant trees. And I actually go and visit the tree plantings. I do an inspection of the tree plantings to make sure they're planted correctly. And then I kind of keep track of them for about two years because that is the time frame that the uh, applicant is responsible for maintaining the trees. Um, okay. And once that is that time frame is if the trees are in poor condition during that time frame, the applicant has to replace them. Um, okay. If the trees are um, healthy and they are successful, then there is then we just the time frame of the two years is over and that's the end of it. Okay. So, so I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't get involved as a tree warden. I don't get involved in, in trees that are on private property unless um, there it's specifically tied to the existing significant tree ordinance. Okay. Okay. I'll probably have other questions for you, but I'll email you and thank sure. you so much for that. I sure. really appreciate that. Yeah. that and so sure. awesome. You're welcome. Thanks. All right, any other questions or comments from anyone? All right, seeing none, um, it is six o'clock, 6.01. Could I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? No, don't be shy, somebody raise their hand. <laughs> oh, oh boy. I move that we adjourn. All right. All I right. second that. All right, any discussion on the motion? No discussion. Bonnie, did you get all that? I did. Thank you. All right. Thank you uh, very much. You, everybody. Um, all in favor, just raise your hand, please. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. Bonnie, for your work. Yeah.